Welcome back to my channel. I'm James. Today we're going to be reviewing and deep diving into Cool Hand Luke on 4K Ultra HD and the Maltese Falcon on 4K Ultra HD. Both of these are brand new 4K Ultra HD releases from Warner Brothers and they're kind of to celebrate Warner Brothers 100th anniversary as is kind of on the logo on the front of these cases. But these are exciting 4K releases that when they were announced I was curious how much of an upgrade were they going to be over the previous Blu-ray releases, if at all, and what the actual quality of both of these were? Well, today I'm going to answer all of those questions for you, and I'm going to deep dive into both of these releases, share all of my exclusive testing data, and the exclusive 4K versus Blu-ray image comparisons of both of these releases to show you what the quality is, and then sum it up at the end with my review score that lets you know if these are worth buying and how these compare to hundreds of other 4Ks I've exclusively tested and reviewed here on my YouTube channel. Now to start off with here, I'm going to show you Cool Hand Luke's 2008 Blu-ray release from Warner Brothers. This is the transfer that's available on Blu-ray and has been available all of the time up until now, this new 4K release. As always, these are the native images pulled directly from the discs. That's without all of the artificial things your TV can do to artificially change them. And this is always what makes the biggest difference when we watch these discs. Now those images above from the 2008 Blu-ray, it was a rough transfer. It had lots of issues. It was soft. It had an incorrect color grading in numerous scenes. It just had fluctuations in the image. But overall, as far as a release went, it was not an amazing release. Now, for the brand new 4K Ultra HD release of Cool Hand Luke, this is a native 4K 2160p, and it does have HDR10 on it. And I will say the HDR10 does help drastically with the lights to darks, Though overall, the film does have a more drab color palette, as is noticeable in the previous Blu-ray, it was extremely drab, dull, and just kind of an ugly looking transfer altogether. On this, they did a new color grading and the HDR10 does help it, but it's still kind of more or less browns, and then obviously like his prison uniform has blues on it but it's still a more drab presentation. It's just the HDR10 does the absolute best it can with the new color grading, and it does enhance it over the previous Blu-ray release. So in that sense, they're doing the absolute best they can with the colors to provide the most they can. Now I talked about some of those color fluctuations that were in the previous 2008 Blu-ray. Those are gone on this. They did fix those, so there aren't those heavy color fluctuations where their skin would go from kind of like orange on that to like pink to then back to orange. It's a more stable color palette throughout it where their skin tones look more natural throughout this entire release. Now, getting to some of the things that are not so good on this release. For the film grain on this, it is extremely light and there is some film grain noticeable in numerous scenes, but then on the opposite side, on the negative side, there's some scenes that are extremely washed and actually they've used grain reduction and some DNR to get rid of the film grain almost completely. There's some scenes in this that you'll be watching and all of a sudden it just becomes so smooth and the film grain disappears to where you literally can almost not see it at all. I mean, we're talking, it's, you have to have a microscope to almost find it. And then it'll go back to having some lighter film grain, then to another scene where again, it's completely washed of film grain. And that's where this transfer is a mixed bag. It's just not perfect. It does have instabilities where it does have some digital noise in it. But even with those things that I didn't like that they did on this, I do want to reference that it's still an upgrade over the 2008 Blu-ray because the 2008 Blu-ray was really horrible. So it is an upgrade over that. They just, I really wish they wouldn't have used any DNR or any grain reduction or grain control programs like the program NEAT. If you wanna know more about that, you can go to Google and type in NEAT and you'll learn all about that. But that's one of those programs that a lot of studios use. I can tell you this has DNR and most likely the program NEAT was used on it to kind of limit or get rid of, actually to get rid of film grain in quite a few scenes throughout this. So it is one of those that yes, it's an upgrade. Yes, it looks better than the 2008 Blu-ray, but I feel like it could have looked so much better if they wouldn't have tried to take away or limit or reduce the film grain that was in this. Because you'll notice when you're watching it, you'll see some scenes that, man, the film grain's stable and filmic and it looks real good. There's lots of depth and detail in the image. And it'll go to a completely another scene where it's washed of almost all film grain. I'm talking, you gotta get up and walk really close to your display. You gotta stand there and look to just see 
even the iota of film grain that would exist in it. And you can tell it's been completely washed and the depth and detail disappears and it becomes a very softer image. Now on the previous Blu-ray, the whole thing was pretty soft. I mean, to be honest with you, the 2008 Blu-ray, there wasn't much of the entire film that had really good details or depth in the image at all. So again, this is an upgrade considering it's only certain areas and few scenes throughout it that are washed of the film grain where it gets soft. Whereas the entire Blu-ray before from 2008 was soft altogether. So again, we still are talking about an upgrade with this. It's just I was expecting a whole lot more, especially for a lot of these classic films. Like I've reviewed over the years, like The Guns of Navarone. That was a really great classic film that they did a great job with the restoration on 4K Ultra HD. If you haven't checked out that review yet, you'll want to go check out that review here on this YouTube channel after you get done watching this video. But this is one of those that I just felt like they could have done a lot better job on this. And it'll be reflected in my review score, my thoughts on that. But they just didn't need to use any of those programs to eliminate or reduce the grain. Because when they use those, it limited the details in a lot of the scenes throughout this that it just gets a very soft appearance. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Just like with this exclusive video where I do these exclusive 4K versus Blu-ray image comparisons that you see above, that's something I exclusively do that takes a ton of extra time and work to pull all of the data off of these discs, to test all of them and to share all of that data with all of you. So make sure if you enjoy all these videos to go down there, give this video a like and a thumbs up for me, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now for this release, it does have English DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 mix. Talking about the audio on this, this is another area where I just didn't feel like it was a massive upgrade over the Blu-ray. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't sound better, it does sound better, but it's also limited by its original source materials. So that 2.0, there's only so much they can do with it. They did fix some of the hisses and the clicks and just some of the issues that were retained on the old Blu-ray are fixed on this. Is it perfect? No, there's still some things that I felt like if they would have spent a little more time working on the audio mix, they could have made it sound a whole lot better than what it does. But again, it's still limited by that original source material. And I do understand that. It is an upgrade again, but a slight upgrade over that previous Blu-ray in the audio department as well. Now, if after you get done watching this review, you decide you want to buy either of these releases on 4K, as always, I've done all of the work for all of you, and I've included the direct link from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. Those links down there are on sale for the same price as everywhere. It never costs you even a penny extra when you click on those links down there below, but it does help to support this YouTube channel when you click on those links just a tiny bit. So make sure if you decide you want to buy Cool Hand Luke or the Maltese Falcon after you get done watching this review and this video, make sure to go down to those links I've posted down there below and click on those to order your copy. Now showing you what you get in this, you do get this really nice slipcover and I do really like what Warner Brothers is doing for their 100th anniversary. I think these really like gold shiny slipcovers are really nice. They're thick and really beautiful slipcovers. I'm a big slipcover collector so I do like these. It does say Cool Hand Luke on the side, and then it talks about it on the back here. Special features wise, you do get a commentary by Historian. That's obviously all about Paul Newman. And then you also get the original Blu-ray release. And I'm gonna touch on that Blu-ray disc here for a second. The Blu-ray that is included in this is the exact same 2008 as what I'm showing you up above. They did not put the new transfer with the new color grading on a new Blu-ray disc in this. They simply included the previous transfer that was on Blu-ray and stuck it in this case. So that's another thing that I kind of felt like it was a missed opportunity by Warner Brothers. Because if you've watched my recent Star Trek The Next Generation movie review, when I was talking about that, a big selling point of that set is it included a new transfer on the Blu-rays plus on the 4Ks. Well, sadly in this set, it is the exact same old, really bad 2008 transfer that's in this for the Blu-ray set. So the only disc you're getting in this that's new is the 4K Ultra HD disc. Now you do get a digital movie copy in this as well, but minus the special features. Now, when you get inside here, this is your Blu-ray, which is the original transfer, like I said, from 2008, there's nothing new on that. And this is your 4K Ultra HD disc. Your 4K Ultra HD disc is 100% region free. So again, you won't have problems playing this anywhere worldwide. So if you do decide you want to buy this and have this shipped anywhere worldwide, that link down there from Amazon does ship anywhere worldwide. So make sure if you decide you're gonna buy this set, 
to use those links I've posted down below. Now, for a film that came out in 1967 with Paul Newman in it, I really love the performance in this. I think the score is great in it, and I think the story is really good. You really grow to love Paul Newman's character. It's very charismatic. He's just one of those characters you really love and feel a connection to. And this is one of those films that I do feel like everybody needs to experience. It is a wonderful classic film that has a great story that even holds up today. And this is one of those that I've always really enjoyed the film, so I was looking forward to their release on 4K Ultra HD. And it is one of those, as a fan of the film, I am glad I have it. But as a professional reviewer, I have to take that side of it out of it. And so when I go through this, I have to take out my fandom out of these, so that way it doesn't taint or change the review score. Because just because I'm a fan of the movie doesn't mean this is a pristine, perfect release. Because it's not. I did expect more out of it. Did I enjoy it? Yes. But it is not one of those that I can say is absolutely amazing. Now getting to the rough average bitrate for this. This did have a healthy 65 megabits per second rough average bitrate. It was healthy. It was pretty stable throughout it. The issues are is, is those things they did with the grain reduction and things to get rid of grain in certain scenes. It doesn't matter how much of a good bitrate you have when you use those programs that take that grain away, it's still going to be a soft scene no matter what. So that's one of those things I just wish they wouldn't have done. Now getting to my review score for Cool Hand Luke on 4K Ultra HD, this gets a fair 8.1. It's a fair release. If you're a fan of classic films, buy it. If you want to have it for the upgrade and visual experience, then buy it. It is one of those that I enjoyed and as a classic film fan, I recommend getting this 4K release if you've never seen the film. Obviously get it in this because you still are getting an upgrade over the 2008 Blu-ray. I mean, again, it is an 8.1, which is a fair review score. It's just not amazing, outstanding, incredible. It's none of that. I mean, it is an 8.1. And that tells you where it stands in comparison to hundreds of other 4Ks I've exclusively tested and reviewed here on my YouTube channel. It's an 8.1 for the visual and the sound quality. And it is an upgrade over the drab experience. The biggest thing I would say on this set, which is the biggest thing you'll notice as an upgrade, is the implementation of the HDR10. That is where I feel like if they did not have HDR10 on this, it would be very, very minimal of an upgrade over the Blu-ray because of a lot of the things like I mentioned. But because of that HDR10 implementation, because it made all the colors look better, because it was so drab on that Blu-ray, it did enhance it and did give it a better look because of that. But that's the biggest selling point I can say for this release, other than the scenes where they didn't use any of those grain reduction programs. Then in those scenes, it did look good, but you can imagine if they hadn't done it through the whole thing, the whole thing would have been a much better release and would have gotten a much better review score. Make sure to let me know in the comment section below how excited you are for Cool Hand Luke. If you're gonna buy this and upgrade to this, make sure to use those links I've posted in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. Let me know if this is one of those that even for the upgrade it is, maybe it's not the biggest you're expecting, but it's still an upgrade that I enjoyed enough that to me it was worth the purchase because it's also not too expensive. It's not 30, 40 bucks. You're looking around 20 bucks for this, which is a decent price. That's just my thoughts on that. So as far as it goes, it gets a fair 8.1. Next up, we have the 1941 noir mystery crime classic, The Maltese Falcon. And this is one of those films with Humphrey Bogart that I've always loved. Now, if any of you have checked out my recent Casablanca review, um, that'll kind of give you an idea of how much I enjoy classic films with Humphrey Bogart in them. But if you've seen that review, it gives you an idea of how excited I was when they announced this. It's one of those that I really love getting these classic black and white noir films on 4K because if done correctly with HDR10, which this does have HDR10, it can really enhance that black and white imagery to really give it that inky blacks and brilliant whites. Now, the 2010 Blu-ray that I'm showing you up above, as always, is the native image pulled directly from these discs, both the 4K and the Blu-ray disc. Now, the 2010 Blu-ray always had some issues with some what I call gray, gray, gray crush, or black crush is what people call it. But on the Blu-ray, it was actually more a dark, dark gray crush on that Blu-ray. Um, the Blu-ray itself was not amazing. It had issues with the sound, quite a few clicks and hisses. 
And there was some issues with the image still having lines through it and little speckles and little tears and just some things that really could have used a nice restoration to increase the quality of that image and make it look a whole lot better. Now in comparison to the 4K Ultra HD release, it did get a brand new 4K restoration. And I can tell you a lot of those issues that were present on that Blu-ray with the little lines and the tears and the blots and splotches, those are fixed and gone on this release. They did go through and do a very good job with the restoration cleaning up the image while leaving the film grain. And thankfully they did leave the film grain in this release. Throughout the entire presentation beginning to end of this film, there wasn't issues with the film grain being gone or DNR'd or the program need or them reducing the film grain. It's filmically present throughout the entire thing. There are some slight fluctuations throughout it, but again remember this film is from 1941. So that's to be expected without them using programs to reduce or get rid of the grain, there will be slight fluctuations in a film from 1941 and that's expected. Um, it does look very good with that film grain adding depth and details into this without going into Black Crush. Now, as I said on the original Blu-ray, it had Grey Crush, or Black Crush is what it's called, but I just like to call it Grey Crush. But anyhow, on that original Blu-ray, it did have those issues. This you can see more in the image with the HDR10 implementation, but there is one thing I need to point out, because a lot of people that have never seen this film are going to incorrectly assume that it's Black Crush. It is not. What is in this is they intentionally, as was the original director's vision, the cinematography in this was intentionally made to look like a darker noir film. That was intentional. This is a much darker film than like Casablanca was when I was talking about that previously intentionally there's numerous scenes that are meant to be where somebody's coming out of the shadows and on this because it does have inky blacks and brilliant whites it does enhance that quite a bit more but that's something that's hard for a lot of people to understand between black crush and what's intended on this it was intended to look darker they retained that with this yes it has a great job using the hdr10 to enhance the lights to darks the different levels of grays and whites and things like that but in those dark inky scenes, man, does it look phenomenal compared to the previous Blu-ray. It just gives you such a good, noir, eerie feeling that's really enhanced with the way that they did this restoration. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now, for this new 4K restoration, this is presented in a native 4K 2160p. Talking about that film grain for just a second more, you will notice a couple of things that are issues with how it was transferred, and they are slight though. I'm being very picky in this sense. There is some slight artifacting and some very slight blocking of the film grain. That's where when they did this, it causes because of the digital way that they did the transfer, where the film grain was slightly blocked together. Now it's very, very brief. It's very, very insignificant. It's just something I noticed when I'm doing these image comparisons. The artifacting is something you will notice just slightly more. And that's simply in a lot of areas where there's white and it's really, really bright white, sometimes you'll see that artifacting a little bit more present. Um, but it's not horrible. Again, the limitations of what this transfer looked like before on the previous Blu-ray and what they've done for this is a very nice presentation that they're presenting on this. So I understand those limitations for a film from 1941 and it does look very good, but it's not as good as what they did with Casablanca that I referenced earlier. But I do think that has to do with also the differences between this is intentionally a darker film than Casablanca ever was. So you kind of have to go into it with that understanding just a little bit as well. Now for this new 4K, we do get an English DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 mono mix on this. And I can tell you it is a nice improvement over the previous 2010 Blu-ray release. It does fix almost all of the hisses, clicks, the little issues that were on the previous audio mix that was present on it are almost completely gone and completely fixed on this. It is a very nice, clear and crisp audio presentation. There was a lot of scenes in the original 2010 Blu-ray that were slightly muddled. It was hard to hear because of like some hissing and just overall noise that needed cleaned up on the previous Blu-ray, it was hard to hear some of the things. On this, it is very crisp, it is very clear, and it is very clean. I was very surprised because of the limitations, obviously, of that audio mix, 
how much work they did on the audio mix on this that makes it sound so much better than that previous 2010 Blu-ray. And one of the biggest improvements in that audio mix is the dialogue. And obviously we want the dialogue to be the easiest to hear because that's what we're watching the film for. The dialogue in this sounds so much better. There's more nuances you can hear in their voices and voice tones that I never heard on that previous Blu-ray before. So again, that's why I said, it was a nice, healthy improvement on the audio mix. So I do applaud Warner Brothers for the job they did on the restoration on the audio mix on this. Now you do get subtitles on this in English, French, and Spanish as well. So those are available if you need those options as well. Now, as I said, I do enjoy these classic noir films. And if you haven't checked out like Touch of Evil, I did that review on 4K here a couple of years ago. And that's available now on this YouTube channel. That's another great noir film. And that's an amazing 4K release that everybody needs to check out. If you enjoy these types of classic films, I've done hundreds of reviews of classic films over the years to check out here on this YouTube channel. But if you enjoy this classic film, I definitely recommend checking out the Touch of Evil review because that's another one that I feel like fits in this genre that fits well in these types of classic noir movies. That is one I do recommend. It's got a great story with some good twists in it. And the surprising thing for this film is, is because of how well this film was done, written, acted, and directed, they've never tried to remake it because it is really an epic masterpiece. This is one of those films though that I will tell you if you have not seen this film yet, you're gonna have to watch this film probably three times. It is not one of those films you're gonna sit down the first time and get everything in this. You're actually gonna watch it the second time and still probably say, okay, I, I understand more of it. But the third time is where you're gonna say, wow, now I see how epic of a masterpiece. There is twists. There is turns. There's things about the dialogue that at first you're kind of be like, okay, I didn't get how that tied together until you watch it the second time. So when you dive into this film, especially if it's your first time, you really need to understand it is a detective mystery. And it is one of those that has multi-layered elements and it really is multi-layered film. As you watch it, each time you watch it, you will peel back another layer of the film and the story and understand more of it and appreciate it more. Do not watch this film one time. If it's your first time experiencing this film, you need to watch it at least twice to get more of an appreciation and understanding of the multi-layers, as I explained, that are in this film. Now, showing you what you get in this. Again, you get a really nice slipcover. I love the gold they're doing for their 100th anniversary. On the side, it says the Maltese Falcon. On the back here, it talks about the film and the special features, which I'll get to the special features in just a second. But you do get a new audio commentary by Bogart biographer Eric Lax. And the rest on here are the same special features as on the previous Blu-ray release, because just like with Cool Hand Luke, they included the original previous Blu-ray release in here. It is not a new transfer. They didn't take the new restoration and transfer and put it onto a new Blu-ray. It is the old Blu-ray disc that is in here. So again, that's a little disappointing that again, they did not include the new transfer on the Blu-ray. It is only on the 4K Ultra HD disc in this set. Now you do also get digital copy code minus your special features. Now, when you get inside here, you have your Blu-ray disc. Again, this is your original Blu-ray disc and your 4K Ultra HD disc, which is 100% region free. So if you decide you want to buy this set to have it imported to any country, or if you live in region A, the USA, anything like that, those direct Amazon links I've posted in the description section ships anywhere worldwide. They never cost you a penny extra through those links down there below. But if you decide to buy any of these releases after you get done watching this review, make sure to click on those links down below. Now getting to the rough average bit rate on this, I dived into this and did some extra of my testing on this for all of you. I can tell you this had a very strong and very healthy 74 megabits per second rough average bit rate. That was surprisingly healthy and strong for this. That really did surprise me overall. It lends to why this has such a stable image other than the limitations of, like I said, because it's from 1941, those aren't gonna go away. That's just the limitations of the original film elements. And that's not something wrong with this release. But the actual film grain and everything they kept in this, they didn't DNR it away, thankfully. This did not have those issues. It looks very filmic and adds to the war experience of this film for the black and white and having that gorgeous film grain in this for once. Blows away the 2010 Blu-ray in that sense as well. This 74 megabits per second was really a surprise for this release and Warner Brothers did a great job with this restoration. Now getting to my review score for the Maltese Falcon on 4K Ultra HD, this gets an amazing 9.5. This is a must buy. 
This is highly recommended. You buy this and add this to your collection. It is an epic detective mystery noir movie that everybody needs to experience at least twice, if not more. So if you do buy this and this is your first time seeing it, as I said, make sure to watch it twice before you make your determination about the film. It's a wonderful experience. Humphrey Bogart shows why he was one of the best actors in classic cinema, and he really does an outstanding job with his performance in this. This, along with Casablanca, are both necessary required viewing for any cinephile or anybody that loves cinema in any sense or form. You have to watch The Maltese Falcon and you have to watch Casablanca. Now you can always go check out my Casablanca review after you get done watching this review, but both of those come highly recommended. This gets an amazing 9.5 and is one of those that Warner Brothers did a great job on this. Don't know why or what restoration team worked on the Cool Hand Luke one. That is one of those that kind of baffles me that it wasn't a better release because when you see this and then you watch Cool Hand Luke, you say to yourself, man, I can see the film grain gorgeously throughout this. Why they didn't do that with Cool Hand Luke, I don't know why they didn't do a better job with it, but it is what it is and I'll always be upfront and honest with all of you as I always have been. That's why I dive into and do all of my testing on all of these. But this one is a masterful, amazing 9.5. You gotta buy this and add this to your collection. I put that direct link from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. If you decide you're buying either of these now, make sure to go down there and click through one of those links. They never cost you even a penny extra and they're on sale for the same prices everywhere. But those links do help this YouTube channel just a tiny bit. That's how it helps me be able to keep creating all this exclusive content for you to watch here on my YouTube channel. If you enjoy all the time, the hard work, and my heart and soul that I put into every single one of these videos I create here on my YouTube channel, make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club or give a super thanks to the super thanks button down below. Both of those options that go straight back into the creation of every single one of these videos. All that money makes a drastic difference. You can give a tip through the super thanks or you can join my VIP club membership that gives you a bunch of perks and hidden benefits that only my VIP club members get. And that goes straight back into the creation of every one of these exclusive comparison reviews that you see above. All of these are something I take a ton of time and work to create. And I do this for all of you exclusively here on my YouTube channel. So if you enjoy all these videos that you've watched for many years here on my YouTube channel, make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club or give a super thanks to the super thanks button down below. Also, make sure to start the conversation in the comment section below. Let me know which of these films you're excited for, which of these you're wanting to buy and add to your collection, and whether you're a little disappointed in Cool Hand Luke, or if you're just excited anyways because you're a fan of the film that you're just excited even for a slight upgrade. Make sure to start that conversation in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on both of the films. As always, I truly hope all of you have a blessed day and I've always got something new, early, exclusive, and exciting coming out soon.